right. So how do you play chess on this thing? There's got to be a button that says play a game or seek a game or something, right? You could spectate, I guess. Uh, welcome to live chess. Let's see. Can I do uh, seek five five? Nice. Here we go. It's running a lot more smoothly than I expected. Um, first of all, I wasn't sure that I knew how to obtain a game. But, um, okay. Oh, so, um, getting used to where things are at. This must be some kind of lag indicator or connection indicator. Um, we're just playing a playing an Italian game here. Although we've kind of transposed into Scotch territory, I think. Um, I've prevented this important pin of Bishop G4, so that's usually how um, Black tries to counterattack in the center in this opening. Usually doesn't concede it right away. Um, my opponent seems to be trying something different here, and I'm kind of confused by it. So. Yes, pieces are getting exchanged, but I'm getting steps closer to his king each time an exchange occurs. I've seen this position before, and even if he takes on b3, it's not so great for him. Um, I could consider knight d5, but I want to leave my options open. But yeah, now I've got a rook on a half open file. I have control of the center. Yes, he does have bishop f6. Um, but I have something prepared against that. So I'm going to actually let the bishop sit on f6. I'm not too concerned of what trouble it might try to bring. If he plays bishop e5, I just play f4 and he has to go back. If he moves his g-pawn, I can take the bishop. Um, meanwhile, this is just awkward for him. This bishop is not really that great on the long diagonal, because... Um, well, my pawns block it. Yes, the pawns are a bit of a target, but I can always take the bishop if I'm concerned about that. And so now we just hurdle the pawns forward toward the king. The other part of this idea is I was considering bishop d4, um, just claiming the diagonal back. That really seems to be the best way to proceed here, unless I can fit in g4, g5, and getting some meaningful concession over here. Um, what happens after g4? Like, it's kind of tactical and scary, doesn't it? Well, even if I push g5, he just takes it, I take back, and then he's got the e5 square. See, so yeah, really the only way I can contest the center is just the direct approach. It's crude, it's ugly, but it's functional, so yeah, I still have a end game advantage if we ever do proceed to an end game. Um, I have space advantage 
I am the advantage that my pieces are somewhat better coordinated. Um, and one disadvantage I have is I'm not sure how to proceed here. Mistakes are all there waiting to be played. Um, here, let's push my double pawn forward a bit and grab a little bit of space. I'm, I was always thinking of dropping back to e3. b6 is tempting, although I'm not sure what um, is it of any benefit to me. Yeah, I'm just going to drop back. I don't see any point in going to b6. Hello! We're playing chess in space today. I do want to take the half open D file. I just got tired of playing Bullet and Blitz a lot, and so I'm playing a bit of a slower game here. Um, that's the main reason I'm playing here. Sorry. Um, it's Lee Chess is awesome for finding the best, best bullet and blitz games out there, but if I want something slower, um, something where my opponents tend to crush me a lot more, it's sometimes easier to find a game here. Sometimes. So yeah, I've piled up on both of these points. Um, I could try to get my rook over to g3, maybe. Uh, this position's beautiful. I'm going to be able to smash this fortress. I could try. I could try rook f3 to g3 and just hit that. Um, or I could just take on d6, go up a pawn, and make some attempt to win that endgame. Um, I'm going to go the heroic route.
Let's see, I saw this one coming a few moves ago. It's a pretty standard kingside tactic. That's why you can't leave the king here um, under a number of circumstances. There's some where it's okay to leave the king on its uh, castled square, but often you want a little bit more. Uh... Okay, wait. Wait, before I transfer my queen there, my rook is doing absolutely nothing on d1. Let's move the rook there instead. The queen has more squares to choose from. The rook it doesn't have as many. Um, where's that knight going? If that knight goes to e7, I've got queen f7 check. Surely that must lead to something. Um... We'll just keep shuffling and shuffling. This is what we call a bind, and it's awfully painful to get stuck in one. Alright, so I admit it, I don't have a checkmate. Um, <laughs> I'll just take a winning position instead. Bet it all on, bet the house on e6 here. Um, yep, I acknowledge I'm in time trouble. I certainly acknowledge that. Oh, right, there's the increment. Oh, thank goodness. I had forgotten. Uh, here, tell you what, let's exchange rooks. And I'll show you that I can win this. What's the pawn count at? Pawns are even. So... I would have to win a pawn if I'm going to exchange the rook for the knight. Uh, or I'd have to have a really convincing position. Uh, yeah, this knight doesn't scare me. I'm not going to walk into some knight fork. I know better than that. My king guards the c-pawn and the g-pawns. So there's really nothing to fear but fear itself. Or fear of trading too many pawns. Um, trading too many pawns could be sad, but assuming I have enough pawns left to promote even one of them, I should be okay. Meanwhile, he just encourages me to move my king forward. Oh, wow. Um, can I win that? Well, yeah, I could probably win it, but there's no point. Why win that when I can just win this? 
And by that, I mean Rook takes Knight probably wins. But, you know, this definitely wins. Really easily. So, there's not much point in looking at the alternative too deeply. Um, take one of those. Take one of these. And golly, we get a similar endgame. I could even take the knight, maybe. Um, yeah, that knight's a pest. It's important to know your end games. I say as I probably bungle this one. But hopefully not. Hopefully I did get this right. It will be sad if I did not get this right, but I think I got it. Right. That's the move of most resistance here. Um, I'm just playing to create a passed pawn on this side. Uh, and once the king's deflected, we create a passed pawn on the other side. And suddenly there's a lot of threats to attend to. Uh, so take that. I still think this is winning. I've seen something in an endgame book that looked very much like this, but I think it was on a different rank of the board, and I think that makes all the difference. So I've still got the opposition. Um, does king g4 win this? I don't remember. Here we go. h4. Pawn takes. King takes. And I still retain the opposition. Like I said, it's important to know your end games. Right. Uh, so I forced him to sidestep. Or I forced him to, yeah, step aside so I could sidestep him. That's the appropriate way to speak about that. I gain the opposition again. And as long as if he plays king f7, I don't immediately push the pawn, I'm still winning this. Um, right, and you have to know this thing too, but this isn't too hard. And here he can attempt to claim the opposition, however, once the pawn's on the fifth rank, the opposition's not a factor anymore. Oh! Well, I complicated things. We're going to see that position again in a second. If he plays king h8, which he should have played. King h8 is the tricky way to attempt that. Um, yeah, sure. Totally up for a rematch. All right. Oh, that reminds me. I said I need to do more of the Benko. Um, let's see, I forget how I want to approach this sort of thing. Oh, because we've interpolated these moves, I can't just throw e5 in anymore. Um, Let's try it this way. So, I guess I'm playing a Kali against whatever that is. Um, and we'll see just where we end up. Okay, so now we're kind of 
Yeah, this is like we're in Stonewall-ish territory. I haven't officially played F5, or I should say reverse Stonewall. F5 has not happened, and taking there was unexpected, but I've, I don't know, I've got a lot of pressure going here. Sure, let's get an endgame. I'm not afraid of pursuing an endgame. I think queen c2 is kind of forced, but I hadn't even thought that bishop f5 was an option. I kept thinking about this in stonewall terms and see, not coming up with that move. Um, so do I play f5, or is there an advantage to not having played it? <coughs> or should, I should say instead, of, is there an advantage, is there a significant advantage to not playing it? Um, no, <clears throat> f5 still seems like the most reasonable way to attack here. Uh, it does shut in my bishop, though. But where else am I going to get a break in this position? This is just weird. I could play a5. could interpolate a5, b5, and I'm not sure what I get for it. Oh, but a, b5 would drop the c-pawn. So if I play a5, we're likely going to see knight takes, pawn takes, queen takes, rook takes, b5. Uh, or even if he doesn't trade queens after we traded knights, then b5. And I've got a target on a5 for what? Oh, I should move my queen away, and then I could play rook d8. There's an idea. So tempted to still play bishop f5. I mean, it looks reasonable. It just keeps exchanging and liquidating, though, and that's why I dislike it. But it's kind of hard to avoid trading at this point. A knight takes, king takes, queen there, followed by queen takes b4, rook b1. Bishop takes, bishop, no, I'm sorry, not rook b1, queen c2. Yeah, I don't have anything there. Might have been something last move, but not now. Oh, that's cool. It shows me the time I took on a move. You can actually see the time allocation per move. Not that, that particularly matters, because the time you spend on one move is time you don't spend on the next, in general. Hey, LC. Um, so, this center is... Oh, man, this is complicated. Um... Yeah, this is kind of why I hesitated to play bishop f5 in the first place. He's got three attackers. I've got one, two defenders. I guess to get a third defender, I have to drop back my bishop. To which he probably plays f3. Um, but f3 weakens his center, so that's okay. Okay, this is weird. Right, so I'm going to take that bishop. I know that I'm exchanging my good bishop, um, but uh, 
reason is, well, we were going to get those exchanged anyway, and I prefer to have my queen centralized. Um, obviously, rook d4 is the intent. Um, there we go. My queen is still centralized. Yeah, it looks weird for sure. I'm not sure how to meet that one either. Um, I don't want to leave a... Well, I'm going to be stuck with a backward pawn in one way or another. Um, I really didn't think he was going to do this right away. Because now we are trending toward a draw. Um... Now that doesn't make any sense. In fact, uh, tactically it's not justified either. Alright, so where do we move this queen? I guess this is... ooh. Okay, I didn't count on that. That's well spotted. Um, if I do queen b6, when we trade here, and then hypothetically trade queens, and he takes c6, I could play rook there. Um, we could play rook d6, I could double my rooks. We both take, he's up a pawn. Um, Well, this is going to get dicey, um, but what can I do? Oh, in fact, I forgot he's got back rank weaknesses. I can exploit those to get a, a vital tempo when I need it. So, yeah, if he starts exchanging, which he does because he wants to win a pawn, um... That doesn't mean gloom and doom for my position, because he's got to take some time out to deal with problems. Um, I guess rook fc is forced. Pins galore. There's more pins than you have at an art and craft show or something like that. There's more pins than a bowling alley. There's more pins than... I don't know. Make up your own metaphor. Use it. Express to yourself just how many pins there are. And how it is a big number. So if he plays e4, okay, I was going to say queen f4, pinning the pawn and hitting the other rook. Obviously he's preparing uh, e4, and so I prepare to counter it in the most obvious uh, fashion. Really? Are you sure about that one? That seems awfully dangerous. You do realize you're playing with fire, right? I don't care about my A pawn anymore. As you can tell, there have been some developments in the position. Um, check. Uh, 
Even this is not so easy. Here, I'm gonna throw in another check just to try to identify where is this king going. Um, and then we play cautiously. That could have gotten really interesting if he didn't drop the rook. So the next idea here is d4, and just blast this open. There really isn't a defense to that. Um, there's no way to prevent the position from opening up. And if you take back with the pawn, I'm winning material, because I'm tricky. Oh, actually, the really good move here would have been queen check. Um, exchanging the queens, not just winning a rook. I'm sure a computer would probably prefer the move I played, though. Uh, okay. Wants a rematch? We got a rematch. Not a problem. Ooh, I'm not gonna play one as. Oh, never mind on Zug's openings. Uh,. I was going to say we might... Well, okay, let's play into Vienna territory. I don't claim to be any expert of the opening, but Zug's played it enough times um, that maybe I can try to emulate what he does. Namely, just push the F-pawn, take the center, and I don't even know if I'm supposed to take that or not. Knowing's half the battle. <clears throat> Alright, so I've probably walked into some silly trap or something. Um, can I do queen d3 here? I think so. I mean, yeah, it does trap my bishop. It does allow him to exchange his knight for my bishop. Um, but as we saw in a previous game, that exchange on, in some circumstance isn't that um, good of a thing. It isn't necessarily good to win the bishop here. Do I not have d5 under control? Oh, really? So now I've got three options. I can ignore it, I could take it, and I could push past. Um, let's take these all in turn. Um, ignoring it seems reasonable. Um, taking it also per leaves my bishop on an open line, and so it seems plausible. Pushing past seems kind of insane because that would um, block out my bishop. Um, that's a, there's no re reason for me to take c5 uh, at this time. I guess pushing would force... That would actually trap his knight, though. Um, and then I could exchange under favorable circumstances on a 6 and double his pawns. So 
that combined with the fact that he's got a backward D pawn just seems reasonable to push. If nothing, we're gonna. If nothing else, we're gonna learn whether or not this is a bad idea. Um, I mean, it seems reasonable because now we're in some kind of Benoni ish position where all of his king side is clamped up and not doing anything, and he's trying to push on the queen side. And I have better queen side control, at least in theory, if not in practice, in that kind of opening. Um, so I should be doing great here, I think. Uh, once, Actually, I want to stop this from moving any further, don't I? Although if it does push further, I just play bishop b5 and then I take it. So that's a free pawn, except he's got queen a5. Um, so I'm going to close the queen side. My aim here is going to be to push e5 and smash this in some sort of favorable... I don't know. There's got to be some reason that e5 is strong here. I mean, once I get in d6, f7's uh, toast, shall we say. Because I got my rook, my knight, and my bishop all ready to line up and blast that to smithereenies. Uh, so, and this knight, although it looks awesome over here, it, it can only go to a6, and from a6 it can go to c7, and from c7 it can go to e8. I mean, it's awkward. Alright, so if I push, takes, knight takes, knight takes, bishop takes. If I push, bishop takes f3, preempting this whole thing. Um, pawn takes d6. Um, I'm not sure. But I want to do something before he plays bishop f6. And pushing e5, allowing an exchange on f3. I'm sorry. e5, he takes f3, I take d6. As long as I'm not hanging material somewhere, I should be able to gain either one of these two bishops. And it looks fun. That's the important thing, is that we're having fun today. So... Um, second important thing is that it's generally more fun to win than to lose. Although not always. Alright, so we're gonna go down the rabbit hole and see what awaits us here. I guess having doubled D pawns isn't such a great thing. Um, oh, am I walking into a fork? I guess if he puts his knight there, I have to take it. Or sack material. All right, that's really awkward for him. Like, unless he manages to win the d-pawn. I guess he is, well, no, he hasn't managed to win it. Uh, so since that's not the case, I mean, what's he gonna do in this position? Okay. I'm going to try to play this a little bit safe here. So, supposing... Well, I mean, yeah, I looked at so many scores for my bishop. One thing I couldn't do is bishop b3, because then he's got c4. Um, and I don't think I have any tactic to save the day there. Oh, that's clever. Thankfully, I've got this um, useful, if not clever, intermezzo. Uh, so he can't do knight c4. Right. Um, so knight takes d5 would be a fork if I put my queen there. So that's why I'm taking to double my pawns instead. Um, and now I've got the bishop here in an open position. Um, really actively placed, too. I 
I guess bishop a3 would have been reasonable, because, yeah, now I dropped my d-pawn. I was not looking... I was not even counting pawns at this time. Um, maybe I should be. Uh, but I just want to develop my pieces and see if I can get some shot over on the king's side. It's like here if the other knight moves... In fact, I'm lining up for bishop takes b6, except my king's in the wrong spot. Um, I'm kind of also lining up for bishop takes g7, if this knight moves. Rook g3 might have been an option, I should have looked at that. Um... Do I have bishop g7 here anyway? Bishop g7, king g7, queen g5, king h8. Rook takes, knight takes, queen uh, queen takes, problem g5. It's not quite working out. Um, wow, this is extremely cheesy, but I think I have the Greek gift sacrifice here. That's just so overdone, so overhyped. But, um, I don't see anything else here, so, cheese it is. Uh, yeah, this queen over on c7 is not able to participate in this defense. Everything is misplaced in terms of defense. He's really focused on attacking here. Oh, I, I'm mistaken. He's got this move. Um, still... Surely I've got something here, right? Um, we'll play the obvious. I assume he's going to play h6 against this. Alright. Um, so queen g7 is the next idea. Queen g7 discourages bishop takes, um, but you know what we have now? We've got an endgame. I know that sounds crazy, right? That we went through all that trouble getting this beautiful attack, and now we've given away our attack to achieve some really strange, bizarre looking endgame. But think about it. Like, each move I'm improving the placement of my pieces. Um, and I don't think the same could be said for his pieces. So let's play rook f3. Um, f6 kind of is and kind of isn't the target. I was partly just avoiding the rook fork that comes when I play rook e6 and not getting a knight f4. Um, but yeah, this position on the queen side is kind of my target. Um, isn't it just great in chess that you can get a bind and just keep hammering and hammering away at your opponent's position? And they just sometimes can't maneuver their way out of it. So we've now, I mean, yeah, I haven't taken anything in quite some time in this position. And that changes now. So I just won a knight. And a rook. Can I take that? Mm -hmm. 
There we go. Oh, that was exciting. I want to see that. Um, and I'm pretty sure this computer analysis thing... Oh, he wants a rematch. Alright, we'll get a rematch. Um, I didn't get a chance to read that computer analysis thing after all. Uh, okay, so this my tournament opening is the symmetrical English. Do I want that to always be the case? Maybe I could learn this one. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking with this opponent, this might be the last one. And we might move on to a new opponent, one who pays attention. Um, I don't mean to be critical of his last game. Everybody hangs pieces, but allowing a move like d4 in the opening just says that I'm not looking at what you're doing at all. Uh, yeah, I thought that was a really good game. I looked forward to um, figuring out just, um, did I miss anything that game? Or was it a perfect game on my part? Um, all right, so I'm gonna discourage B4. I mean, that's the sort of thing I've been missing a lot um, in the Bullet and Blitz games I've been playing. That sort of struggle and strategic aspect, I've just very sadly been missing it. And yeah, it's great winning in time pressure, um, but they're just... I. Last time I played here, uh, was because for whatever reason I just wasn't able to use the other site, um, but I found that my opponent's moves on this site tend not to be concerned with trying to flag you. Um, we actually get that kind of interesting struggle, and I've missed it. Even in Blitz, we get that kind of struggle here. And so I'm just giving this a try again. Uh, shoot. So I'm pretty much invincible as long as I don't lose the center. Um, I'm trying to figure out how to advance in this sort of thing. It seems hard to do. Well, I'm going to keep his knight away. I see that he's just piling on all his pieces. Um, but he does know this pawn's guarded by a bishop, right? He knows, like, how much the pieces are worth. So I'm not sure what he's intending. just going to double back and protect my king. I'm still... Okay, so maybe he's intending a4 or something. It's just so unclear to me what he's up to. Uh, let's push this. I might regret it later, because this does make a hole on d5. Oh, this is my current game. Wait, yeah, this is the current game. This is the other one I wanted to analyze, but we'll have to get back to that at some point. I was wondering why the board changed size on me. 
be nice if my previous games showed up somewhere else other than below the board, because there's really no room below the board. Um... Okay, so I've got him thinking. At least for a minute there I did. Um, I think my king belongs not on a light square. Yeah, I mean, that's... there's a lot of really weird things that could happen here. Um, I'm going to expand the scope of my bishop, because there's no reason not to. I mean, yeah, it does open the e-file, but I'm not afraid of anything there. I think white is just completely barking up the wrong tree here. Like, I just get that sense that there's something so much greater than what he's been looking at. Okay, there we are. He finally plays bishop d5. But is it too little too late? Stay tuned for next episode. Oh, no. <laughs> um, wait a minute. Guys. I think we've all been missing something here. Guys, there's an involuntary queen sacrifice in this position. Involuntary sacrifices are hilarious, but that queen's trapped. How many turns has that been trapped there? Also, am I the first to notice it? Uh, I probably am. But. Regardless, here we go with the involuntary queen sacrifice. I only found this because, like, nothing over there is working. So I'm like, okay, have I just blundered somewhere, or what's going on? And that forced me to just go back to the basics and figure out, really, what are all my candidate moves? Um, I eventually spotted this one. Wait, wait, how long ago, okay, yeah, no, I, I did say it before anybody else said it, so at least you guys were kind enough not to uh, spoil this. Uh, oh, okay, yeah, I am playing with fire here, I don't deny it. I did not expect the queen to go that way. Um, but thankfully the c8 bishops defended. And I just need to find a way to get my rook back to a8, my knight back to b8, my queen back to d8, and my development will be complete. Oh? You're not going to sack the rook and then fork me. I guess, no, this wins a pawn. The other approach would not win a pawn. Um, also, I'm pinned on that back rank. Uh, I think... 
think I still do... I'm only losing a pawn here, though. Because he cannot play rook b8. He cannot play rook... Or rook bb8. He cannot play rook ee7. Oh, I was going to play rook a8 next. Uh, that's not going to work. Okay, so... Throughout all that, um, I did not win a big exchange. I won a little exchange for a pawn. Still, I, it's a decent position. <sighs> so you guys might have been right. Maybe that sack does work. I'm just thinking about g4, king g2, king f7, king g3, h5, king... No, that does not work. Um, yikes, he's got a lot of compensation here for that. I'm going to have to move quickly to get anything. By quickly, I mean um, play accurate moves. So I'm going to try to sack two more pawns to win a minor piece for a pawn. We might see like a six pawns versus a rook and a knight endgame. Oh, I'm sorry, six pawns plus a bishop versus a rook and a knight. I hope you guys have been studying your endgames. No, seriously, nobody studies this one. There's just not enough time in the world to study such things but yeah I'm not gonna do pawn takes pawn because he's just got a f attack on the h6 pawn and a threat to win that pawn so instead we're gonna go this way about it I think his bishop's trapped so having trapped his queen we're gonna proceed to trap his bishop maybe I can find a way to you know, uh, seal off the game by trapping his knight also. How great would that be? Um, can I pin the knight, take it, and then win the end game? Is that winnable end game? I'm not sure. I mean, it looks winnable, but Oh, guys, there's our night trap. Check it out. I trapped three pieces in one game. How great is that? <laughs> oh, man. I'm on fire here. Okay, so if the king moves away, I just take the f-pawn. Um, that was predictable. Uh, rook a2, king d5, rook takes, king takes. Not so hot. So I'll put the rook behind these pawns. And I'll need my king to win um, the this stuff on the queen side. <laughs> oh shoot! I should have gone the easy way of taking. No, that's not any easier. Um, okay, we're gonna gain this tempo whether or not it serves us well. And thankfully, I can eliminate that. Okay. I'm not going to lie. This I am feeling a little bit exhausted at this point. Um, not going to lie.
I'm not sure if rook c3 or rook d3 were, was the more accurate move here. Um, but now I've got opposition, so if he pushes c5, uh, which he does, actually opposition didn't really matter. I guess it doesn't matter which way I pursued that. Hey, look, a free pawn. But yeah, it's fair for him to play d5 there and try to bluff me into thinking my king has to move away. Guys, three trapped pieces in one game. Oh, my opponent's left the room. That's how you know it's a good game. Um, so let's see, does this thing work at all? Oh. Okay. You must keep this browser tab open to complete your analysis. I wonder what would have happened if he just went back and forth the king instead of pushing the pawn. You know, that's a legit question here. Um, and if this analysis board would stop now. Um, so, my plan was to drop my rook back to c1 or d1 because I knew he couldn't push the pawn. Um, but your question is, what if we just try to keep that status quo there? I would obviously need to take some time and figure out what's the right way to go. Um, oh, ha ha! I forgot that that link is blocked. Um, there was a time where I was very much against having everybody posting that link in this channel. I'll have to unblock it, but we'll get around to it at some point. Um, but yeah, my idea was just bring the rook back to d1 or c1, and that we would have our kings dance back and forth for a little bit. Oh, can I move this dialogue? No. Alright, can we at least have the computer finish this analysis so we can discuss it better. I think my idea of putting the rook on d1 was not the best way to go. I saw that it would at least give me some time to think. Um, I didn't need to find the winning move instantaneously. Uh, but yeah, so your question was regarding this. Yeah, after I dropped the rook back, which I do, I need to do this so that later, I, if I need it, I can pre uh, have checking distance. Um, I'm playing on the site because I get opponents who play good moves. Um, I'm just frustrated with opponents who regularly drop pieces. And I'm frustrated with regularly dropping pieces and time scrambles, too. I just get a different challenge here. I'm not saying it's better, not saying it's worse, it's just something I appreciate more. Um, let's see, so king takes d4, let's see, d4, yeah, I mean, it's a good question, how does black win this? Because we saw that if I just put the rook on the first rank, the rook's not able to break the pawn fortress. Um, I think what I was actually supposed to do was just bring the rook over to h3. Uh, I can't actually drag the pieces to do analysis here. This site's kind of dumb with regard to analysis and studying and all that. Um, so it would have been better to play the rook over to h3 and then intend rook h5. Or maybe play rook a5 to h5. Um, I wasn't so keen with that idea just because it looked tactical in nature. Like here, if I'm doing rook a5, king b4, I'm bringing my rook over there. At some point I want to approach the pawns with my king, and there, there's just too many possibilities here. There's He could play d5 and move his king forward all kinds of ways, he could play c5 and bring his king forward, or bring the king behind the c-pawn. It was just too much for me to calculate all at once. So I opted to go for this, where I control the timing of when I play my rook over to h5. 
I didn't have to play it there right away. Um, now, probably all those lines would have worked out just fine, but here, as opposed to having his king somewhere where it might be on b4, it might be on b5, it might be on b6, it might be on c4, it might be on c5, king could be anywhere on this side. Um, whereas, like, now if I play my rook over to h1 to h4, this king's not having all these options of being on the queen's side and trying to push the c-pawn through. This king's kind of nailed um, in this wide open central space where my rook can check it and block it and all these things. So this is the more comfortable way to approach this. Um, again, rook d1's probably not most accurate. I could just do rook h3 right away. And I probably should have done rook h3 right away. And then, if he plays king c5 or king e5 or whatever, I play rook h4. Um, and he's tied down to the defense of the d-pawn. He can't move his king over toward this. Really, getting the king toward the corner where uh, both pawns are moving in the center is kind of scary. So I just tried to keep things simple and try to control the timing of what my opponent could do. And... Um, since my opponent was playing really hastily on the clock, there really wasn't, um, he didn't put up much of a fight here, but he, he could have tried to draw it out a bit and tried to threaten king b6 at some point. The problem with king b6, eh, just in theory, is that my rook doesn't have much space around the queen side to check the king. Uh, so I could only check it from the king side. But these kinds of checks that go all the way across the board allow the pawns to interpose. So this is why I want to attack the pawn that's closest to the center, which offers my rook the most checking distance. Um, so there is some theory here. Also, it's good just to have an awareness that these ideas like rook d1 or rook c1 in general stop your opponent cold in their tracks, so you can always play this sort of thing if you need more time to think. Know your end games. I mean, here I knew it well enough to buy myself a little bit of time on the clock to find the right answer. But yeah, if I'd known it a bit colder, I would have just played uh, replays. Uh, I would have played this rook d3. I like this. But then after king d5, I would have played rook h3, rook h4. Or maybe rook h5. But, but yeah, once I get this king not anywhere in the vicinity of b6, um, that's when I play the rook over here. Tricky stuff, man. Um, so, let's go through the game. <laughs> uh, computer does not like my g5 move. Computer has no aesthetic sense. I'll just put it that way. Yeah. Now, I'm pretty sure it's wrong about this. Not just having a difference in opinion, but I'm pretty sure that g5 is black's only way to try to gain an advantage in this position. Um, and that it's pretty silly for him to play moves like rook d8. Although, I mean, there's some sense to that, but g5 is the one that really prevents um, white from playing bishop f4 or knight h4. And this signals, or it even prevents white from playing h4, which stops this cold. So the computer is just misevaluating this kind of structure. It doesn't get this very often. Usually the computer will have an advantage um, by move 16. So it doesn't need to play this sort of position. It just doesn't know that g5 is a good idea. Now there's a lot of things that are wrong about g5, like it does block this bishop. Uh, it does open the king to attack. It really does nothing to help with this problem of this bishop being behind the e6 pawn. But in terms of a practical winning chance, this is the way to go. Um, if you're just aiming for a draw, I guess rook d8 is fine. But where's the fun in just drawing? Wait, b6 is an option. That's interesting. I still don't like the fact that the bishop's on this wide open diagonal and he's got the possibility of queen b5. Um, that concerns me a bit. 
but mm, yeah, I don't like this at all. This is awful. I don't. Black really doesn't have a plan here, nor is he menacing anything. And white could even play moves like h4 or g4 and just completely shut black down. This is terrible. Uh, regardless, yeah, we saw rook b3. Ah, this is where the queen was trapped. Move 20. That's what caused it. 21, 22, 23. Hey! Fifth try. Not too shabby. Because that that idea never shows up in this opening. Um, the funny thing is, by the time I found this thread, it allows White to actually make some um, noise here. And even once I played it, it's not the best move. Better would be just to take here. Wait, what? I, really? Are you serious? Okay, so trapping the queen is not the right way to go here because black has something even better than winning a queen for a rook and then giving up the rook to win some material and get a decent endgame. It's got something better than that mediocre thing I found. I was so proud of my queen trap, too. Well, aside from the fact that I missed it four moves in a row and I found it the fifth time. But none of you saw that. Um, anyhow, yeah, it's saying that finally I would have broken through, which would be crazy. It would justify my whole strategy and make this whole trapping business look ridiculous. Um, again, yeah, it's suggesting I interpolate pawn takes pawn so that we don't get the messy endgame we got. And it's completely right there. Uh, I should have traded pawns, and that's kind of a big deal uh, when you're only up about a pawn. Or after this I am. Um, up a pawn with a side, somewhat better position. Rook b6 is a good move. I get no exclamation point from the computer because I'm just expected to play good moves. Oh, actually, if he takes g5, I've got knight e5 taking a d3. That might be even stronger than the thing uh, I ended up playing. Um, I did... Uh, oh. So I should have just taken d3 and then I'm threatening the f-pawn. Okay, so out of the three piece traps I executed that game, only one of those three was actually the best move. Um, whatever. Yeah, sorry, I, like I was saying, I will get around to unblocking that at some point, but I'm not bothering with that at the moment. Um, so I'm going to seek another game if I can. Don't need this computer analysis. Uh, let's seek a new 5-5. Five five. All right. At some point I do need to go back and analyze that game I played a few games ago. But realistically, it's not going to happen. Um... Oh, I could have played the Halloween Gambit. What was I thinking? I was thinking I want to play an opening that doesn't suck. I just... I just... But Halloween Gambit's fun. Instead, we get this opening that I used to play all the time, really. Just bringing out all the knights and trading off in the center. They call this the Scotch game, or the Four Knights game. Scotch variation. Um, I don't even know how it got that name. Somebody must have called it that and the name stuck, but I don't know why. I think that D5 does not work here, but I don't remember the theory.
Right. So this is the thing I see all the time against um, this variation. Or one of the things. I, the other thing you see pretty regularly is bishop b4. Um, so I think I just play this in castle. So now what? The way I used to play this, I was just addicted to grabbing the bishop here. It's not actually that strong of a play in this position. Um, okay. Yeah, I don't know what to do here, actually. Queen d3, queen something seems reasonable. f4 and queen e1, queen h4. That's actually walking into a discovery. So that's not called for here. Taking c6, I don't know. I'm just not feeling it there. Um, bishop g5. I mean, where else is my bishop going to go? I could try the long diagonal. That could be fun. I know he's just going to play a bishop f6 at some point. Um, but I guess before that happens, I could always play knight d5. Yeah, f4 is the typical thing. I don't... I've tried playing f4 a number of times, and I'm just not happy with the result. I just get these vague attacking possibilities, and I'm just not sure what to do with it. Um, I'm preferring something a bit more direct here. Um, well, I mean, if you want me to pry, I could suggest theories. Um, but I think you're probably just looking for sympathy and saying it just sucks when you drop pieces. Uh, okay, where does this go? Well, I have to play f3. This is weird. <laughs> All right, so I'll pull that up over here. Um, whoops, where'd the window go? Um, I mean, it's probably mostly because you're just not familiar with that position, and so you're making some mistake because you don't know what you're doing and what you're looking for. Um, so you got your king's gambit. You're playing that as black. Um, maybe getting your queen trapped, I'm not sure. Okay, but you got some kind of useful attack going. Chasing the king down, he checks you, you trade queens, oh, and you just hang the rook. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, bishop g5. I didn't expect him to play there. That's interesting. Um... Well, I'm going to seize the diagonal. You ate something questionable. Hmm. Now, I've had friends ask, uh, similarly, why do people blunder in games? What causes people to blunder? Especially after they've played such a good game. Um, oh wait, knight f5 would be a mistake here. At least it looks bad. 
Um, all right, so it looks like, well, I can't do that. Can I? Okay, so I've played F4 in more dubious circumstances here than would have happened earlier. Um, yeah, I can't let him fork me on E3, so this is happening. Um, and he does get a pin on the diagonal. So this is pa part of why it would have made more sense, as people were suggesting, for me to just uh, play F4 earlier and not get into this mess. Uh huh. Let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna try to activate my rook through the A file, and he's probably just gonna counter with A5, and that'll be end the end of that. <laughs> hate it when you encounter minotaurs. That's got to be inconvenient. Hmm. Do you try a dexterity roll? Alright, so... I'm not sure what good a dexterity roll would do you, but it sounds like something that you could try. It sounds like your negotiate check failed. Uh, wait, did I just put G4 here? How crazy am I? Also, what am I doing trying to hold on to the bishop pair here? It's just causing me agony. There we go. Problem solved. Just put all my pawns on light squares, then get rid of my light squared bishop. Maybe I should not have my king here. Actually, pushing c4 might have made more sense earlier. That way I could um, guard the bishop along the second rank and protect g2. I'm just being super ambivalent in this position. Never fear, ambivalence man is here. Yep, that's his cry. Just, eh, I guess he's here. Uh, okay. Hmm. Okay, let's play the rook over, I guess. Oh, I'm in time pressure. That's convenient. Or not. So I get for trying to look at a different game. Um, this is the big idea I had. That I'm just going to shuffle my queen around. And now he's got an isolated deep one. And I've got a five second increment. Um, I 
Wait. I probably didn't want to do that. Oh well, too late now. <laughs> oh, I hope it works. Oh my goodness, I did not see Bishop takes f6 coming. Um, guys, uh, this could get messy. Oh my goodness. Oh, that... I, I was really concerned that I was dropping that bishop. Holy moly. What a roller coaster. I'm so fixated on trying to improve my piece position um, that I underestimate these tactical considerations and how, like, just losing a bishop on the spot followed by maybe losing an exchange could have destroyed me. And I probably should have, like, been more cautious and double-checked. Um, yeah, so motive for playing here is that, well, you saw my previous stream, or perhaps you didn't, um, where, well, let me try to not lose this. Here, let's advance. So my previous stream, I was just having troubles connecting to Lee Chess. Um, and so I use this as a fallback. Um, <laughs> I discovered I got a different challenge on this site than I got on Lee Chess. Just, um, and Lee Chess, often it, it's just about who can move the pieces faster, at least in my experience. Um, that might not be everybody's experience. It probably is not. But here I was just able to get a different sort of challenge. And it's just refreshing in a sense. Okay. Like in a time scramble, here it's rare that anybody drops a piece other than me. And even when pieces are dropped, there's tons of compensation for it. Um, yeah, no, I foresaw that he was going to get the bishop for the knight. I really wasn't too concerned about that. Uh, I guess I have to... No, I've got to attack like this. Oh, shoot. Yeah, there's no defending that, is there? Alright. Well, time to buckle down and draw this. I misplayed that. There must have been some better chances than what I have. I offer a draw. There we go. Um, might get a rematch there. Yeah, simple. Oh, yeah, F5 would have been a good draw. Uh, maneuver. I don't even know what this is. Yeah, you're right that in theory there might be... Well, I mean, in practice, too, there might be some winning chances in that position. This is more like a reversed... What's it called? The thing where you play knight f3 and knight e5 and you gambit the c-pawn. That thing. So reversed one of those. Except it is no more. <laughs> uh, Autocorrect. So, I resolutely avoid moving my knight. And he resolutely avoids taking on d4. Um, yeah, 
honestly, I don't even know how to proceed here. Like, uh, in other queen pawn positions, if they do knight takes, you just play e5 or e4 and kick the knight and then play knight c6. Here, I think with my king in the center, it's more than a bit risky to do that. <laughs> ah, Zog has um, the courage to get right to the heart of the point there. Yeah, I was just really confused by that too, honestly. I mean, I chalk it up to just... Yeah, the, the thing where you dropped your rook. I, I mean... Maybe your point was that you're just going to promote the pawn and it didn't matter. I don't know. Maybe there's time pressure, maybe it was a mouse slip. I... There's so many reasons that could have happened. Yeah, that's probably a good one, no joke. Yeah, people tend to repress memories of that sort of thing, where they just accidentally hang ten of their pieces. Ah, okay, it's a time scramble thing. Still, ten seconds? Okay. Yeah, I mean, if, if you want to avoid time scrambles, play slower games. I only play that kind of panicky sort of thing that, that Rook takes pawn if I'm like below 5 seconds. 10 is a bit early for that kind of nonsense. Well, we've got our symmetrical English. Somehow. <laughs> uh. Oh. I had an interesting game earlier today. Uh, Zug did miss it, unfortunately, but um, he had some kind of weird English position where my opponent put their queen, I think it was on a5 or b5. Yeah, it was on b5. Um, in some ways, kind of had a lot of Benko-ish sort of pressure, but it wasn't a Benko opening. And I managed to trap that queen. Ooh, do I play knight c7 or knight f6? Actually, knight b4 is probably the way to go here. Man, that looks weird. Here we go. Um, so after having trapped the queen, I managed to... Well, the trap only won the queen uh, for our rook. And then he got some material back. And then I managed to, um, after that, trap his bishop, but he got some pawns for it, and then I trapped a knight, but I had to give up my own knight for it. And then we had a rook versus three pawn endgame. But I was just happy I got to trap three pieces in one game. That doesn't happen often. Okay, so I was intending moving my knights out. I think that's still the plan. Okay, we're going to develop in the most horrifying looking manner. A5. None of this slow build-up stuff with um, a6 and queen c7 and all that. I'm just going to develop that. And now... Um, now I can play my rook over to a6 and swing it over to like e6. But yeah, that's the point of a5 is to develop the rook. Um... 
unorthodox for sure. But I don't see anything wrong with it. I could even play a4 here and lift the rook to a5. I mean, when you have these fun possibilities, how can you not play them? Okay, but yeah, a4, he gangs up on my a pawn. I'm not sure that I get anything for that. Um, <clears throat> um, so, what do I do to oppose this? I don't know, maybe I just lift the rook up as I originally intended. He's got knight c5. Um, maybe I just say I'm not afraid of losing my b pawn. Or anything for that matter. Fear not. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sometimes the answer for the answer for why do you drop a piece is because like ten moves earlier you weren't looking for the best move. And you're still not in a mental state where you're looking for everything. It's a lot easier if you just when you've got um good moves to find them then than to try to find good moves in difficult positions. Although I think, what is it, Shamkovich that wrote a book um, by the name of Saving Lost Positions. So, I mean, that's a concept too. Um, but it's not for everybody. Okay, so I'm going to trade queens because I don't know what to do. And also because I think it helps my development. I do see he's got f3, I could go back, but then um, I cover d4 and c5, so there's no knight for bishop trade. So my, in fact, I'd be aiming for the same formation he's got, just my knights won't be as ugly looking as his. Um, I have to take that, don't I? Okay, well, this is tactical, just a bit, no? So do I take c3? Oh my goodness, I can't calculate all this. If I take c3, the only way he can get my e-pawn is by exchanging his bishop for my knight, and so we'll have opposite color bishops, which of course favors the attacker. Um, I don't know. Like, so my candidate moves are rook fd8, rook ad8, bishop takes c3, knight e5. I'm not sure what else. But there's so many ways that either player could hang a pawn here. It's crazy. And trading pieces uh, hopefully would make it less possible to hang material. Um, maybe I have to play rook c8. Rook c8. Oh, I have to be rook fc8, by the way. Takes, rook takes, bishop takes, pawn, rook, bishop takes, pawn takes, rook takes. So, that's a way to avoid losing a pawn. I still don't know if it's best, particularly because it lets this knight move forward to d5. Like, this knight's a monster. I don't like it at all. That knight's gotta go. Um, and so now it's a question of can I play rook d8, bishop takes, pawn takes, rook takes, rook takes, I'm oh, sorry, um, you'd have to start with rook takes, rook takes, bishop takes, pawn takes, bishop takes, and I'm not winning the e-pawn, but I could play rook d2, f3, bishop back, and he probably hits my b7 pawn, which is on c6. Just checking if you're paying attention. Um, 
Yep, no. H3 is not the right way to go here. It loses a vital tempo. It makes this endgame a lot more challenging for white. I think. Pretty sure. Not 100% positive, but this looks challenging for white, for sure. Um, as for whether it's more challenging, I don't know. Also, I don't know if I should have wimped out and played like knight d8. Uh, Bishop c8 is probably trapping my pieces a little bit. I'm counting on being able to play rook a6 uh, meaningfully and getting a decent position out of it. Still going to play it. You can't dissuade me with that move. Oh. Okay, that should have dissuaded me. This is like what I was talking about, where these guys, they don't worry about um, uh, trying to beat you on time. They'll find the right moves. And so, yeah, I couldn't have played the rook forward as I did. Um, okay, I don't even have any checkmate trap sorts of ideas, so I can just resign this. Uh, so, that's unfortunate. Um, yeah, no, GG. Well played, man. Uh, I don't know. Do I issue a challenge back for that? I guess I do. Okay. That's totally cool. Uh, yeah, just spend a minute blunder checking that. So... No, no, I think I played this pretty well overall. <laughs> and then in the analysis, it tells you upgrade if you want to see the actual analysis. That's cute. Um, but no, I thought this is pretty even for most of the game. I didn't like my bishop c8 move at all. Uh, oh, so the only thing that this is really complaining about is my rook a6 move. Um, I'm kind of surprised that it thought this is relatively even uh, prior to rook a6. Plus 1.3. Yeah, okay, you can't really tell that from the graph. Okay, where does this really start to go bad? I thought it was with bishop c8. Bishop e6, even that is kind of compliant, I guess. Or rook f8 is. Yeah, I mean, here is where I've got to start finding a plan for black. Um, I just played way too passively here. I was afraid of hanging material. And lo and behold, I hung material in a really glorious fashion. Um, I was more afraid of hanging the e-pawn here, but whatever. I just failed to activate my pieces. I could have done a lot better. Um, so... That's a pretty silly analysis. I'll make sure not to do that again. Uh, oh, there's a button for 5-5. Five five. Let's try that. Today's categories on Jeopardy are... Yeah. That's funny how it shows that searching logo, though. I guess it takes longer to find an opponent, but those who do take your challenge, um, whatever, they are committed to finding good moves. Uh, let's dismiss this. And... Uh, 
Oh. Oh, wait. That's 21.17 and lower. That includes quite a few people. Yeah, so apparently if I type seek, then it puts a real challenge out there. Here we are, playing the King's Bishop's Gambit. Um... Because it's a thing. I don't claim to know it, but I can try to play it. Um, what happens if I push this? Can I push that? Alright. Um, so, yeah, I see knight e4 is intended by that. Um... Now, I can't take there, because he's got queen h4. As we all know, apparently, you can't allow queen h4 check. That's pretty standard in this opening, you don't allow that. Maybe I shouldn't have... well, I don't know what I should have done. Um, that's more than evident. Wait, I can check him here. Let's do it. Alright, so now I can take there, and queen h4, I can counter with queen f2. So... Um... We're gonna learn something here, apparently. There is a lot of room for learning what the heck is going on. So I've played a gambit, um, my opponent has two sets of doubled pawns, uh, and he's up a pawn. Somehow I don't think I came out ahead in this one. To Trist Intuition. I assume he means trust. He probably means trust. Here we go. That's good peace development. Probably should have done that a turn ago. Actually, I should have done... Well, I don't know. This is really messy at this point. Um, okay, um, uh, well, I don't see any reason not to take this. It seems extremely dangerous, but, oh no. I mean, leaving my queen this exposed and having it be the only defender of that square, it's just a terrible, terrible idea. But it might win a pawn. Do I dare try to win the pawn this way? It just seems ridiculous. Because um, that, then rook e8, and then what? I moved the knight away, and he's got some discovery somewhere, maybe. I don't know. Let's play it. Okay, we're going to regret that. But, um, I don't know. Oh, he chooses not to try to find that. Okay. Oh, wait. Really? There was a much simpler answer to... Okay. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Well, so what do I do now? Shh. 
you know, I could resign this. Uh, it's probably the best move. Yeah, I'm just not seeing a good way to continue here. Yeah. Bummer. Well played. Uh, I challenged for a rematch, although I really should be analyzing that. Okay, he's not doing that. Yeah, let's let's do a quick analysis and see where did we go wrong. Because <laughs> you know, we're going to figure out all the secrets of this opening in this one brief session. Secrets like don't play E5. Okay. I think we got it. You don't need to beat a dead horse, Stockfish. Um, let's go seek a new game. Uh, okay. Yeah, and that's their way of uh, letting you know that you should upgrade. Uh, wait. So... Oh, uh, we've transposed into this. I feel dumb. This is not at all where I want my pieces. Okay. Um, we'll play it this way, I guess. I don't like this. This is not my preferred setup against um, the Peerts. here because here it's I get a different kind of challenge that I normally get in I don't know it just seems like in leech us um, I get a different set of opponents than I get here wait what's this about <laughs> doesn't mean that every time I'm coming here it just means that uh, sometimes I do enjoy playing here believe it or not I'm just going to trade the bishops and get a better position and win it. I mean, you are able to change your name, but you can only do it once. And I don't know if they still have that program open, but I, I assume they do. But I just got tired of losing in time scrambles, among other things. And so sometimes I play here. 
I'm not saying it's better, I'm just saying it's different. And it is kind of an endorsement of the site in that I am using it, but I don't think it's a big deal. <laughs> ah, that's a good one. No. No, that would be crazy. Okay, we'll take one of those. Wait, can I somehow get a knight over to g5? What would it take for me to get a knight to g5? It can't go through f3, it can't go through e4. So to get a knight there, it'd have to go through h3. It seems kind of unlikely. But man, how cool would it be to just get the queen there, get a knight over here, and just say checkmate. I mean... Uh, kind of a pipe dream, eh? Still, where do my pieces belong in this opening? Maybe I play queen h6, f4, rook f3, rook h3, except the damn bishop. Uh, well, that bishop's not always going to be there. All right, fine. I'm, put, I'm betting it all on black. Put all the chips on the table. You know, this is a great strategy um, in positions where you have tons of other resources. Go for the thing that you don't know is going to work. But, I mean, his pieces are so awkwardly placed that it, it would be an injustice to not play this. Um, okay, so we go back. And this knight on e6 is weirdly placed. Um... Maybe I should have played my other knight to e2. Here. I've got a half-open file for my rook. Yes, I see that you have this queen b6 possibility. Uh, I'm not too worried about it, because I've got knight d5. This is just comical. Um... So, oh, I see, he's got rook f7, so my, maybe my queen's offsides a little bit. Um. This is confusing. Um... Wait, did I push f4 anyway? How crazy would that be? Or did I push e5, let him take, and then push f4? I guess he plays e4 then, and I don't have my fantastic checkmate. Um, well, he's going to stop my fantastic checkmate if I don't play f4. So... Again, just doubling down on the whole putting all the chips on the table. Um, now we've gone over to the teller window and asked for some more chips that we can place. Um, yeah, this is a great strategy. All right, so here we go. Rook a3, intending rook h3. Uh, 
Oh, he walks right into it? Really? Okay. Okay, sure. Yeah. Let's play it this way. I mean, why would you do this? Unless you have no sense of danger. I mean, Rook H3 forces him to play Rook F7. That's all it does. Um... All right, here we go. F5. Yeah, maybe rook h3 is not the right way to pursue this. Um, I honestly have no idea what I'm doing, but this looks cool. Uh, I feel like Zug's gonna... I don't know. He's gonna criticize my uh, mistakes here, because... I'm playing really wacky off-the-wall things that maybe don't make any sense. And, uh, oh, now rook h3 is good. Maybe he's saying after f5 it's good? I, I'm just really confused about this. But we're saying that, like, back here, or even a little before that, but whatever, um... Rook h3 is not so great, because he's got rook f7, and I think the point I missed is that he could follow with knight f8. And somehow, magically, every point on the king side is defended, and e 7s not dropping, and I just really don't have any way to open things up. But with this tempo that he gave me for free, um, now we've got something to play with. So now I could consider rook h3, right? Among all the other things that are going on here. I could also consider f6. Pawn takes, knight takes, rook takes. Not so hot. f6, pawn takes, rook h3. It doesn't really help me hunt the king any better. Rook h3, king f7, pawn takes, king e8, pawn takes... I'm sorry, if king e8, I just take the knight. So, yeah, I'm winning this. Wait. But rook h3, knight h5... Might be his idea. I don't know if I should be concerned about that. Rook h3, knight h5, knight f4. Oh, but I'm not going to fork his pieces, so... Oh, man. I'd like there to be a simple knockout blow. How great would that be? Okay, we're going to start the combination with this. Um... And now I have a choice between knight f4 to hit the knight, and g4 to hit it, and all kinds of stuff. This also threatens knight takes g6. That might even be the best move here. After I take g6, I can take e7. Um... Here we go. All my pieces are hanging. This has got to be special somehow. Yeah, that's forced, I think. Why did I go for this? I don't know. I thought I had rook f3 after some things. This is perhaps not as good as I imagined. Um, check. Yeah, I think he badly blundered. Uh... Though I'm kind of returning the favor the way I'm playing it. Um, that was not accurate at all. But it won, but no, that was terrible. Um, 
Maybe the computer analysis could point out my mistakes. Now, I wager that this is... Well, okay, first of all... Yeah. I should have seen that this was going toward a Pierce, and I prefer not to play bishop c4 against the system. Because it creates all kinds of complications. Like, you see he's got these b5 and knight b6 ideas that... Unfortunately for him, he didn't see that that was actually just simple and good. But, um... Then he dances his knight around and doesn't develop the rest of his pieces. Um, and I play some wacky moves that... Uh, well, I guess practically speaking, you got decent practical chances, but... Um, oh, wait. Well, that was weird. All right, what happened here? This is all I was really looking for anyhow. So yeah, queen b6 just gives me the tempo I need, and then this is kind of crushing. Uh, knight g7 doesn't defend at all. Um, the best move was rook f4. Oh, that's weird. Anyhow, how special is it that I've lost my connection to this server, too? So, something might be up with my ISP. Queen e8, mate nine. Yeah, after I did knight d takes, I realized that I didn't like it at all and would have preferred to move my other knight there. Yeah, that's too bad. Anyhow, computer analysis deleted itself as the connection to the server was lost. Um, so yeah, my whole idea of opening the king side this way was just ridiculous. Um, f4 is not so great, and I should just settle for something reasonable here. Um, but if I'm going to settle for something, if I'm settling for the fact that I'm not mating, which is kind of... After queen h6, um, I don't know, it's difficult psychologically to not just go all out for it. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't see any real alternative here. I should have looked more. Because surely there must be some reasonable way I could pursue this position. Like, I started this with queen d2, which probably is fine in its own right, but I need a long-term plan of where are my pieces and pawns belong here. Um, one thing for sure is that my rook does not belong lined up with this bishop. Another thing is that there's a open or semi-open d file I can use, but not if my queen's in the way with queen d2. Um, so all that said, I should have been looking at things like rook a3, queen e2, intending rook d1, um, Maybe I should not have put my bishop there to begin with. Though maybe at the time I did it, it was okay. I don't even know why I did that. But yeah, I need to play more moves where I have some idea of what I'm doing. Um, if I want to win. And if I don't want to win, I could just shuffle my pieces randomly and see what happens. Um... Hmm. <laughs> Quite the conundrum, that. So, what am I aiming for here? Well, first of all, I transposed into something that I'm not so keen of. Oh, and then I play this A4 thing, which kind of goes contrary to what White normally aims for in the Beards. I should have been building for a kingside attack, uh, not spending, or not overextending myself over there. Although I'll, rook a4 does give me the possibility of rook a3, it's silly. Uh, the Pierce normally continues with a3 and maybe sometimes bishop a2, I'm not sure about that, but a3 is seen kind of often. 
Um, but yeah, I should avoid this system entirely. Like, I don't know. I could even play f4 here, or d4, or knight f3. I was trying to go for something more Vienna-like with bishop c4, and then I remembered that, oh wait, this is the Peerts. Bishop c4 is actually creating a target for your opponent, and doesn't really hit very much on the king side anyway. It just doesn't work out that well in this opening. Um, I just completely blanked on that one. That's my bad. Let's go, go, go. Oh, look, our opponent's playing some uh, Vienna. I'm going to wait for him to take, maybe. Okay, hopefully we're in King's Gambit territory now. Wait. Um, nope, this is my tournament repertoire so far. Now, what do I do? Do I play Knight C6? Uh, do I play Bishop G4? I'm just confused. No, Bishop G4, I've played this before. This starts to assert some control over the d4 square. Hey, we're just playing chess in space. Where nobody can hear you scream. And it's so quiet, you can even hear a pawn drop. Um, Alright, so seeing him play f5 strongly encourages me to like play this Pierce stuff where you get c6 and b5, b4, d5, all this fun stuff. Yeah, I do have to take this. You're right. But look at all the fun stuff I get to do. So I'm curious if he's going to play the knight to a4. He does. It's kind of offsides there, don't you think? <laughs> the world may never know. I push d5, g5, takes, takes, I move my knight somewhere. I don't know. This is messy. I'm not dropping anything, though. I'm just getting mated. That bishop's powerful. So I do this to blunt the bishop. Um, perhaps not my brightest move. We'll see. Bring it on. This is going to be fun. Oh, really? You're going to slow roll this. There's no way that that works. That seems completely implausible. 
Um, I mean, sure, I have to come up with something in the meantime, but uh, I'm just really skeptical of that approach. Here. Take another tempo. I'm going to just plant my knight on d4 and see what you do about it. Take another tempo. I'm guessing he's just going to move the queen away, and this is not going to be a fork. Um. Okay, we pin this pawn to the king. I'm just going to completely abandon my king and leave him to his own defenses. And we'll see just how tough he is. Hopefully my king's tough enough. Oh, would you look at that? He could just play c4. Um, there are a few things that aren't quite right in this position. Um, but how spectacular is it that we can get this far, and it's still not entirely clear what's going on? sack on d2 assuming I have the time to do it ah it's fine everything's fine nothing to worry about here see I got the g1 square covered so you can't play rook g1 it just looks scary it's all fine
funny thing is, his attempts to checkmate me seem um, most successful if he just pushes f6 and bishop h6. Um, actually, f6 and then he could sack the rook. So, there are some problems in this position. But it all starts with him finding this move. I'm sure he's going to find it, too. I just want to see him do it. Yeah, but no, if he plays queen g4 and bishop g6, I take on c3, right? He's got to do his attack with tempo. I mean, it looks horrific, and it is, but you have to find the right moves. Actually, queen h4 uh, seems to foot the bill. Oh, he can sack the rook here, too. Yeah, that's right. So there's all kinds of ways that he can win this. And I'm sure he's just choosing what's the best way. Right, so he found this. This is the, in my opinion, the cleanest way to go about it. So, yeah. I mean, okay, we'll make an attempt to run and see just how badly it fails. Hint, it's gonna fail pretty badly. yet. Oh, got one more move. Queen f6 mate. Or that. So, okay. It's possible that my ambitions in this game were misguided. Um, that is to say, I did not understand this position at all. Um, it's ironic, considering how I've played it in the past. So, is the c6 and b5 thing just way too slow here? Is that what's going on? Should I have played knight c6 instead of c6? Or is it that I just failed to convincingly follow up when I was started? In fact, why didn't I just play a5 here? a5, a3, a4, or a5, a4. And then I push, and I've got a little more space to maneuver in. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So a5 would have been a good idea here. Um, but force a habit uh, forced me to play b4. And then instead of like pulling the bishop back or trying to do so immediately with the bishop b6 I got fancy and then tried to do some well this didn't work out at all so I'm not sure I could have sacked material that would have been okay because this knight doesn't have very much mobility anyway but um, not every experiment's going to be a success that was too bad. But yeah, I should have started with a5, a4. One second. 